Thank you. Right. So we are doing Code of Jewish Law, the Bridge Code of Jewish Law, Kitzesh Chnorch, Chapter 19, sorry, 98. Chapter 98, and we're up to number 11. So we've been saying different things that we can do for food preparation on Yom Tov and different things that we can't. So we started to mention the challah. So again, challah meaning the portion of the dough that we take for the coin, as opposed to, you know, the braid of bread we eat on Yom Tov. So when we, when we make dough, um, we need to take challah. So today we can't, uh, a coin can't eat the challah that we take, so it gets burned. So let's start, Yudalaf number 11. Is a shalosh of yontav, a dough that we need on yontav. We're going to have nice, fresh bread for yontav. Muta the hafrish men of challah, you're allowed to take challah from the dough. Avil, however, also the sofa, you can't burn it like we normally do, at least until after yontav. Why? Then soifim kodshim yontav, we can't burn kodshim, holy things, from yontav. Right, we can only burn things or put things in a fire for eating purposes. So in other words, on Shabbos, it's a malacha to put things in a fire or on a fire. Right, so technically it is on Yontav also. Just Hashem made an exception. If it's for the sake of food, you're allowed to do it. But this uh, challah we're going to burn, no one's eating it. So therefore it's forbidden just like any other malacha uh, would be forbidden. The gum osla foisa, you're not even allowed to bake it. Right? Forget about burning it to crisp. Can't even bake it to preserve it. Meshum de eno royal achilo, because it's not fitting to be eaten. Shari kolono tomei mason, because every one of us is tomei mace. We've come in contact with the deceased or we've been in contact with someone who has been in contact with the deceased. And therefore, every one of us is in a state of tumor, often translated as, uh, you know, ritually unclean or ritually impure. But, you know, we've explained before, it's a different uh, spiritual system. Um, and so we can't have it. And there, now, since it has no purpose in Yom Tov, we can't do anything with it. But Surigam Batiltal, you can't even move it. It's, it's muksa. So what do you do? Rak while it's still in your hand. So you took it from the dough, which you were allowed to do. So what do you do? You have to put it in a place that it's safe. Admit to Yontov will be safe then until after Yontov is finished. Be you burn it then. But once you put it down somewhere else, or once you put it there, it's now muksa. Has no purpose in Yontov. Can't be cooked, can't be eaten. Um, so therefore, it can't be moved again. So that was a dough that we needed on Yontav. We needed the dough on Yontav. Now, the Issa Shalosh Be'erev Yontav. If we needed the dough on Erev Yontav, the day before Yontav, then also the half and the Chala Be'yontav, we're not allowed to take the Chala on Yontav because it should have been done before Yontav when we made the dough. So what do you do now? So, Ella, Aifab, what do you do now is you bake the entire loaf with the challah still attached, and you can eat the loaf, pass, but you leave over some of the bread, from which you will take challah after yontav. So, you have to leave a piece, you know, then you can take challah from that piece. But, Sarach, Shianiach, Pas, Kadesh, Yavshimeno, Visha, Oikatsas. And you have to make sure that you leave over enough of the baked bread that you can take challah and there'll still be some bread left. Because you can't just say the whole piece is challah, you actually have to take it from something. So you have to have enough that you can take your challah and have some left. Okay. And this is in general, you know, this concept, um, well, we might make we might bake bread on the answer, but in, in general, this concept of of things that you can cook uh, for eating, but you can't, if it's not edible, then you can't cook. It's not that not the cooking or putting something on fire all of a sudden becomes permissible. It's for eating purposes. 
All right, any questions? Okay. So now in 12, Yud base, we're going to have a similar idea. So you're allowed to knead dough, but you can't knead clay. Now, probably uh, most of us don't use too much clay on Yontav nowadays, but they used to uh, have these clay ovens and they would seal it with clay. But um, again, it's an example of doing something that's permissible for food, but is not allowed for non-food. So kneading clay is essentially the same process as kneading bread dough. But for the food you're going to have a yontif, it's permissible. For another purpose, not permissible. So also the garbel tit for yontif. You can't mix, you can't knead the dough on yontif. For Philly Ali they go, you can't even get a non-Jew to do it for you. therefore, If you need to seal the oven, they're putting things away on for Shabbos. So let's say Shabbos is uh, after Yontav. Right? So you got a Yontav on a Friday and you want to seal in your cholent. So it's going to be nice and, uh, you know, we're going to keep the heat in. So it'll be nice and cooked for the next day. You have to prepare this clay from before Yontav. So this, this idea... Um, that if there's something that we're going to to need, it has to be done before Yontav. Refesh Marachov Asa. Also, taking money from ma, not money, mad. You're not even allowed to take mad from the street. Unless you prepared it for Yontav and you put it in a corner. Right, so uh, earth in general is um, muksa, has no purpose. But if you, uh, you know, want to use some mud to be able to make the the clay, um, or for some other purpose, um, you can't take that before yontif. Oh, sorry, you can't take it on yontif if it has to be designated. If you take it before yontif, you designate it and you put it in a the corner, then it's ready to use. It's been designated. So this is similar when we're learning about the laws of Shabbos. We spoke about. Um, designating things before Shabbos. We gave an example. Let's say you have a big rock. So a rock is mux on Shabbos. There's no purpose for a rock. What are you going to do with it? But it could be you have this rock and you use it as the doorstop. So if it's designated before Shabbos as the doorstop, then this rock has a purpose when Shabbos began. But you couldn't take a rock on Shabbos that you've never used as a doorstop before and you've never designated and just say, oh, now I want to use it as a doorstop. It has to be designated before Shabbos. Whatever status it has when Shabbos begins, that's the status that it has throughout the entire Shabbos. So the same is with this mud. Or if we need earth for other purposes. Right, we're going to speak about shechting. You know, later on, you, you, know, you need a, to, when you shecht the bird, you need to cover its, its blood with soil. So you can't just start digging into soil. You have to um, have it prepared from before Yontav. And you should be careful that um, not to smear the, the like smoothing out when you smear this mud or, or, or clay that you use on the oven. It's but you should seal it without smearing. Because there are authorities that say this smoothing out process, which is a malacha, since it's not absolutely necessary, it's also malacha even for food. Okay, so even though we're not a probably um, making dough or searing ovens, but we can take the concept. You know, if there's something that uh, admissible, you know, sometimes like for example, making Sometimes you have these homemade play doughs for the kids, right? So we, we can't stop mixing it uh, on Shabbos and, uh, you know, or and Yontav. Even, well, Shabbos will not, but even for Yontav because it's not a cooking purpose or, you know, those type of things. Yud Gimel, number 13. Oifes <laughs> So you got chickens or other birds, but domesticated poultry. 
and it's in your house or your courtyard, and they're for eating, right? Not not, not the kids' pets, right? You have them uh, ready for eating. That's why you have them. Then cover or a base, and they're used to going in and out of the house or the yard or various things. Even if they go in and out, buy them the air of the vaisoi. You can bring them in the evening uh, into the house. And they go into the house in the evening. You're allowed to catch them even uh, outside the, um, the yard. For, this, for the purpose of Yontav, the Shechtet. Right, so the issue here is we can't trap. One of their malachas is uh, is trapping. Right, so you can't trap uh, an animal. But here, these animals are used to going in and out of the yard. They're going out of the coop, um, so they're considered. And the domesticators, so they're considered like already trapped. So if you want to pick one up to uh, to shecht it, is uh, is no problem. But to catch it, not for the sake of eating, also the sudam. You can't, you can't catch them, right? So this is a, an issue not only of chickens or food, but let's say people are pets, right? The same idea. So uh, you know, some people are pet dog, for example. Now, um, there's not a problem. Let's say it sleeps in the house, or it sleeps in a in the laundry or something. There's not a problem with closing the door. That's not trapping the animal because it's domesticated and it goes in and out regularly. It's used to being inside the house. But um, to to grab it, um, you know, to pick it up and you're presumably not planning on eating your dog, then, then you know, that, that, makes, uh, that makes problems, right? Because that's not what hot dogs are, just as long, as long as we're sure. Okay. Now, vim heim chadoshim shloi hergulo. If you got new birds, right? They're not used to going in and out of the house. Also, the sudam of chilo. Now you can't trap them even to eat them. So again, if you have a pet and uh, and you first get it, and then let's say even like a bird and it goes in and out of its cage or different things, or you have a dog or a cat that comes in and out of the house, so we can't trap it if it's new. It's not used to going in and out. Even if they're already uh, in the house. Right? But at night time, when they're roosting, you're allowed to uh, to take them at that time. Any circumstances, if you're planning on shechting, the, the birds before Yont uh, so before Yontov you're playing the Shechtam on Yontov, you should choose them. So I'm gonna Shech this one, right? So uh, again today we don't really Shecht on Yontov so much because we have refrigeration. But pre refrigeration, you have to have fresh meat second day Yontov. So uh, they Shechted. So they should choose which ones before Yontov. Shemazesh <laughs> because maybe if you just take one at random you're going to see that it's, uh, you know, it's a bit scrawny. And the shtaltish, let's sorry, if you swap it, you get another one, and you'll end up handling muksa for no reason. Because if you're not going to use it, it's muksa. Chickens that are not for eating, they're just for eggs. Hey, muksa. So they are muksa. It's no muksa. So in general, just while we're talking about this, so, uh, Except, you know, not everyone has chickens. Some people do. But um, animals in general are mooks on Shabbos and Yontav. They don't really uh, uh, have a purpose. So let's say um, th th there is discussion. Let's say some people use goldfish bowls or fish bowls as, as decorations, you know, as well as having the pet. But it's also it's a, it's a decoration for the house. It's like an ornament. So in that case, it has a purpose. You know, you can move the bowl or something like that. Uh, other animals. So, you know, if we have like a seeing eye dog or, a, you know, some type of support dog and different things. So again, they, they there's some purpose set before uh, Yontav. But uh, other animals, other pets, 
um, you know, the the actual the mux on Shabbos is not really on Yontas. They don't really have a uh, a Shabbos purpose. Okay, you dollar number fourteen. Yoinish Shavach Yun Eliyah. You have doves, and you know, living in the dove coat or living in the attic. <laughs> so you got pigeons in your ceiling. But we're not, we're not talking about the wild ones. We're talking about these, again, the domesticated uh, birds. Alfish cover a gula, love all the even though they generally return to their nest and go back with the forwards. Also, the sudden, you, you're not allowed to trap them. You can't catch them on Shabbos. On Yontav, sorry. You can never catch them on Shabbos, but you can't catch them on Yontav. Philo, his men on the head of Yontav, even if you designated them before Yontav, because they're not like chickens or, or ducks, you know, geese that sort of are domesticated. They they live in the, on the, you know, like live in your house. The doves are like semi-wild. Uh, so they they can't be caught either. Okay. All right. Test valve, 15. So you've uh, you've got the bird that you're going to shecht. The, the rings around the legs of the poultry is to have you allowed to cut them or burn them off on Yontav. Mutter Latvoy Oifus Shemalim Oisim. You're allowed to sew up birds when you stuff them. Right? So if you're making a stuffed turkey for uh, for Yontav, after you're putting the stuffing, you can sew it up. Ah, however, Sarch Lazari the Hachnis is a chut besuch machat bear of Yontav. You have to put the thread in the needle before Yontav. And if you didn't put the thread into the needle before Yontav, you're not allowed to thread it on Yontav. All right, so now back to doing the right thing. You've got the needle thread before Yontav and you sew up your bird. So after you've sewn it up, you can burn away the remaining uh, thread. So, um, anyone sew up their turkeys when they stuff them? No? I don't know. Tessine. Dog him. Fish. So, uh, we're going to speak about different situations that might be in. So, we can't catch fish, you know, like at the ocean on Yontif, even though, um, even for food. But Doc and Shavavava, they're in a pond. You know, you've got a pond in your house and it's for keeping fish to eat. So it depends on a few things. If you can't catch them in your hand, right? So if it's a very tiny pond or very tiny sort of fish storage area, then you'll be able to catch them in your hand. But if it's bigger or deeper, that you can't do that. Rather, you have to use some type of implement, let's say like a, a net to catch them. Then also, the first one, you're not allowed to catch them. I will im f shell the toss me a dime, but if you can catch the fish in your hand, the pond is small or shallow enough, they can just actually sort of grab the fish. Mutter the hustle fill the cle, then you're allowed to catch them, and you're even allowed to use a net. Right, you're even allowed to use some type of implement because you could have caught them. No, it's already considered trapped. They're already taken. Then you have dog in harbor. Now, if you got many fish, so yasmin be'er of yontav zeh shuroitz of the kach yontav. You have to designate before yontav which ones you want to take on yontav. And again, you know, uh, in refrigeration. Second day Yontif, you need a fresh fish, especially if it was a Shabbos coming after a two day Yontif. Right? Couldn't just uh, have fish in the fridge, so you have to catch fresh fish. 
Now she asks about Aza Simon, and you have to make some type of simon, some type of mark. Either you put something on it, put a, a thread, or or you some paint or something that you know which one it is. Vim Sarah Now if you're gonna have all of them. So you know you've got your carp swimming in the bath that you're gonna cook, and you've got two of them, and you're gonna use both of them. Yasmin is cool, and you can just designate all of them. The Haina Shom Ver of Yontav, this means that the person said before Yontav, called Ayla Dogim Anmizam the Yontav. All of these fish I'm designating for Yontav. Okay. Now, Yud Zain 17, Sophic Seda of a Sophic Mukhan. It's a doubt. Was it caught or prepared before Yontav? So if we're not 100% certain, awesome. We're not allowed to use it on Yontif. Or Saraf Godel, let's say it's a great need. So there's there's no other food. There's no other food or there's not enough food. You can be lenient on the second day Yontif. Again, where you have a doubt, not you didn't designate it all, but you have a doubt was designated. But not second day Rosh Hashanah. Second day Rosh Hashanah, the two days Rosh Hashanah are like, in many respects, like one long halachi day. But the other two days Yontif, any other second day Yontif, we can be lenient if it's a doubt whether something was designated or prepared. No questions today. I'm getting worried. No? All right. Everyone actually can hear me, right? There? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yudches number 18. Kol Balachaim She Muksin. All living creatures are muksa. So Aslash Kaisim will think Lehem Mazainus Samachlahim. Therefore, you can't put food or drink in front of them. Ella Baracha Ksas has to be a little bit away. So if you have pets, let's say you pet cats or dogs, the way we feed on Shabbos and Yontav is you put the food or water in the bowl while the dog's in the, uh, not the other room, then you let the dog in. So it's uh, it's already there. But while it's at the bowl, to start putting the food right in the bowl, that's that's uh, problematic. Um, same with birds or fish. You sort of, not right next to them, you put it a little bit further away. Okay, your test, number 19. So, Shachad Oif, you shechted a bird, let's say chicken, in a way that you're allowed to, and everything was designated for Yontav, with them's a trefer, and you discover it's a trefer. So let's just uh, clarify this term trefer, because today in slang, like in the colloquialism, trefers come to be mean anything that's not kosher, right? So trefer, uh, chocolate, trefer, orange juice, you know, whatever, whatever there is. But a trefer literally means that... Um, or technically, should say, technically means uh, an animal or a bird that has some type of issue that's not going to live for, for 12 months. So, trafe actually, the word means torn because the classic example was like a, you had your flock of sheep and a, and a, a fox or a wolf got to it or a bit and it, you know, it sort of attacked it with its claws and it's injured. It's still alive, but it's not going to recover. But trafe can include other things. It can include... Um, lung diseases, uh, internal injuries, and a lot of the internal things you can't tell from the outside. It's only once you've shechted and you cut open the animal and you see um, that, it's, uh, that it's got this issue. Just, just by the way, you know, the expression glut kosher. So glut means that the, the lungs are smooth. There's no lesions. So it's, uh, you know, when they inspect the lungs and, and often if there's been, if the animals had issues in the past, there's, there's like a, it's not, lumpy is not the right word, but it's, it's, it's got little like nod, nodules sort of, um, uh, and it could still be kosher if it's, if it's, depends on what it is, but if it's glut, if it's totally smooth, it means it never had any sort of lung diseases or, or injuries, then it's uh, then it's for sure no problem. So glut kosher literally means uh, that 
the animal was in better health. Uh, but again, in uh, in slang, in colloquialism, you know, glut culture has come to mean anything that someone perceives as a higher standard of culture. So you see glut culture pizza or glut culture ice cream, you know. Of course, sort of, chicken. That's right. You know, that's right, glut culture chicken. But but chicken, at least it's like a one step off. You know, at least they have lungs. But But the ice cream is like, well, I'm glad the ice cream's smooth, but if it's chocolate chip, it's not glut, it's lumpy. You know, it's like, what happened? But, you know, that's, uh, anyway. So you shafted the animal, you did everything right. You took this bird, you designated before Yontav, you uh, it's for eating, you shafted it, everything 100% right, you cut it open, and it's got some internal problem. So it's a trefa, you can't eat it. But not only you can't eat it, Oslo becomes muksa because now it no longer has p- any purpose. Kamoish are muksa, just like any other muksa. Aval, that's a bird. Aval im shach behema of nimsa trefa. If you shechted an animal and you discovered it was a trefa, the muta that's near bamokim shalit is kalkal. You're allowed to move the carcass. To a place where it it won't get ruined, won't spoil. Vim and if you're not able to, you don't have a place where you can put it away or won't spoil. You can sell it to a non-Jew in a way that you don't actually discuss price in Yontif, and you don't actually weigh it. You know, you say to him, you know, you want this animal. Yeah, you know, and you work it out after Yontif. Vulai Gamba Vazim Mufutomim the Shkirch Bohu Trefus Yeshla Hakil. Right? Also, uh, fattened geese, which uh, they find a lot of Trefus. Uh, you can be lenient and also move it around like an animal. Just, um, you know, this is because of the great loss for the animals. You know, the the uh, the geese they're talking about, I mean, um, very hard to get a give a heksha to these things today. They don't really do it, but they used to um, essentially put the the goose in a box or can't move, and they just uh, force fed it. They just shoved f- food constantly down its throat, and um, it got very fatty, very fat. You know, it couldn't burn off the energy, and um, you know, apparently the liver and everything was meant to be far more tasty and. Um, but it's definitely cruelty to animals, Sabra the Chaim, so you're really not appropriate. And uh, as it says here, there's there's many situations of trephus because because it's a force feeding it, the stomach can can explode. Um, all kinds of things. It's uh, something to avoid. Chof, number twenty. Let's squeeze in one more before the end of the day. Right? You should only shecht an animal if there's a great need. Right? In other words, we want to shecht the whole animal and people take one pound of meat and the rest of the animal is like for after Yontav. It's, uh, it's not what we're doing. And you can't sell it by weight or discuss money, set a price, you know, because if you're going to shecht a cow, you know, well, there's a limit how much you're going to use on Yontav also. So it could be your neighbors want some of the meat. So, you know, you're going to have an arrangement that they're going to pay you after Yontav, but you can't actually weigh it to get an exact amount and you can't discuss the exact price. But you say, you're right, or oh, you're taking the back leg or the front leg, I should say, taking the front leg. That's what you're going to have. That's your piece. And after Yontav, you work out um, the payment details. All right, I guess it's, uh, it's still o'clock. Any questions? Okay, well, I wish everyone a wonderful week. Even though it's Monday, we'll say good Shabbos anyway. So I won't see you till, uh, till Sunday. Ah. And, uh, Have a wonderful week, Rabbi. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. Take care. Take care. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, Gazunt. Bye.